Hello everybody, um, good morning from a um, beautiful property at uh, Lynch Lodge in Peterborough from Landmark Trust where we're staying for another event but also filming a little bit. Um, so today we are filming an early 1840s morning dress, well at least that's what it says on the fashion plate, um, but obviously can be worn throughout the day with different arrangements and possibly in the evening with, um, some, with some different accessories. Um, I think it's a particularly pertinent um, era at the moment because our next Victorian ball um, is 40s, well, early, early, uh, early Victorian era. So that should be helpful to some people who are just starting their adventure and want to get sorted for the ball. So we have a look at all the layers. Um, there is already, a, I think, a video we did for later 40s dress as well. Um, so I'll try to pop a link here. Right, and we are starting in a very little bee, as you can see, in my little morning cap or a bonnet cap. Um, this cap was made out of an old christening gown. So it's been reused bits and pieces. Um, I've got a few of these, so no museum wanted to no museum wanted to take them. Um, and I can't wear them, obviously. Um, so I used them for some nice caps and they're going to live on. And the chemise is actually an original one too. It's so-called new old stock. So this one is original Victorian, early Victorian style, but um, it has never been worn. So it's obviously been made as a, possibly a bridal trousseau, and either a wedding didn't happen or a bright night, or what wasn't paid off for some reason. It has a nice monogram here. RB, whatever RB means, possibly Rebecca Brown or something like that, with some beautiful early sort of embroidery, and just about to fit. So um, I've got a few of these, and it's and it's really such a shame that they were made with love, um, usually by conference on the on the continent, um, and they were never ever used. So um, if you go around on Etsy or eBay, you sometimes can find these old, old um, Brocante affairs um, and I think it's just right to get them a, a new life, the life that they were destined for in a way and this they are really really sturdy, beautifully made, um, I'll pop some pictures of the close-up of hand stitching on, on the hems, it, it, it's absolutely amazing um, and yes it's serving a, a new life as it was destined to little gauze, it's, it's really really sweet. Right, uh, let's start with our usual stockings. It's all green today, by well, green and yellow. These are quite tight. I don't think they will need garters. The property here is um, a mixture of Jacobean and, and Regency, so it's quite suitable. And it's quite a comfortable little place to stay for a different event. I'm going to go with the boots straight away. And these are my little booties. They are cotton green with leather fronts and bags. And they are very, very comfortable. They are American Duchess. To be very unladylike, but better light here. We're still using our corded petticoats. Um, this one has been starched, but unfortunately, travel did not did 
not really serving very well, so it collapsed a little bit. But it's rather be stiff, so it should do the trick. Full start, of course it was. I'm still asleep. So again, of course, if you've seen this one before, that's our sort of 30 style. And for 41, it's still absolutely usable. Still very much acceptable. And you've seen the fan lacing as well. So that should be easy for me to put it on, hopefully, over all the curls. People usually say that this one goes in this decay, this one goes in the other decay. But when you had something that worked and was serviceable, you did not just discard it because the fashion changed, you adapted it. And in case of corsetry, if the shape was still the same, it's still the same. Right. Just as well, my shoulder is better after the operation. I would not be able to do that with a frozen shoulder. Right, so, boobs in. You still have the wooden busk. That's open. Oops, up in. And that's, I love my fan lacing, so much easier to get in. Right, now I've pulled the petticoat. Something I forgot to show you in my, in my 30s video, it's a little bustle. This one was made following instructions for the workwoman's clothes and it was basically two layers of twill, sometimes padded, sometimes corded, this one is lightly corded, but just gives a little bit more oomph and smooths the petticoats. It can be worn underneath or underneath the corded petticoat and beneath a normal one or the other way around. Up to you really. I prefer it under. That shoulder is still not right. And the standard petticoat. Again, this actually hasn't been starched. That's what happens when you have to travel with a lot of clothes for several different events. And there's just no space in the car. So these layers would be very similar for most social strata, really. 
Um, Cold this petticoat would not be that popular for the working class. Mostly, if it's very well starched, it's just going to be a little bit. Uh, where's the bottom? Too much for work and too much, too much work to start with actually, because it takes quite a bit of time to starch it, dry it, press it again, and keep it in shape. So you would most likely get on with just one petticoat for your work and possibly two stuffed petticoat for your Sunday's best. Well, I have a choice of a couple of things here. So I might go with a little chemisette, just hiding my decolletage, or a little collar. And I think I go with the colour for this time. So let us have a look at the dress. It is my daffodil dress, as I call it, and it's very, very yellow. It's a yellow stripe in a transitional style of the late 30s, early 40s, where you have not only a lot of flounces, but lots and lots of very complex sleeve details. Not sure if you can see this one. The sleeve is still full, like in the 30s, but the shoulder starts to be much more gathered. And here's pleating and little frills. Not dissimilar to the Reading Goat I featured in my first Victorian dressmaker book. The armhole is piped. Does it show? And the front is also gathered into pleats. Interestingly enough, different from the other 40 dress, this one closes in front um, for a couple of reasons. Firstly, when I made it, I still had a very poorly shoulder and couldn't really do anything at the back. It's much better now, still hurts, but mobility is getting there after the operation. So the front closure would be very typical of a working class or a middle class when you have to dress yourself, basically. Oh, because you don't need any servants, as you see, to get dressed. But it would also be... more convenient. I'm stuck. Getting there. Getting there. For, for example, pregnant women. Because you can undo the pleats and regulate the front opening. Let's see if we can do it all up. As you can see, it that's the hooks are nice. So you have hooks on one side and not really eyes, bars on the other side, and they will close in front. I'm sorry I'm in the back of you, but it's the best light here, so I'm trying to do it up. can see the front overlaps a bit so that's the opening it's nicely hidden and now I need my sash The only thing that that's at the back, actually. Oh, was that? Uh, 
put it out. Let's put a little color on. This looks better without actually being more true to the fashion plate. Colour goes off. A suitably trimmed bonnet goes on. And these can either get tied off or they can just hang loose. I must say the curves are quite infuriating. I prefer the higher up ones for the earlier period. They're not constantly in your face. But. Right, we can have a, a pashmina shawl or just gloves and an umbrella in case it's a little too sunny and I'm sort of ready, I think. I'll Let's go outside. It would be cooler than here. Right, there it is in all its yellow glory. And that's a very typical style of very early 40s. Um, now it's done in pretty silk, not the highest quality of silk. Oops, forgot to do my cuffs. Um, but it's still silk. Um, the same pattern, which by the way will be available from my next book, Victorian Dressmaker 3. It will be some time before it comes out, but there you go. Come to this one. Um, but the same pattern can be used for a working class gown, just skip the ruffles. The ruffles take a lot of fabric. I mean, there's about 10 metres of fabric in this gown, and the ruffles take most of it because they are on the bias. So that's what really showing off. The, the pattern is simple, the style is simple, but the decorations is what makes the gown. Um, sort of more higher class or middle class Sunday's best. It's a lot, a lot of ruffles, I'm afraid. Um, but as I've said, take simpler sleeves, get rid of the ruffles, make it in cotton on plain wool and you have a perfectly serviceable um, middle or lower class outfit, especially with the front opening, so typical for um, service people, or actually for children as well. So, let's go for a walk.